Prime Minister Rafra, ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome to the 2021 RAID online conference. RAID has been at the frontier of how technology transforms society, business and government in Europe, China and the US since 2017, when RAID was launched by Cavendish Group in partnership with the Fondation Perspective at Innovation. The first RAID physical conferences took place in Paris at the Palais de Luxembourg and Centre Pompidou in 2017. These events brought together cross-sector industry leaders and government officials from Europe, China and the US to express balanced views on the challenges and opportunities of robotics, AI, internet and data. Since then, the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic have turbocharged the rise and influence of technology and its developers. Harnessing the power of technology in an equitable manner has become an even more critical area of common interests for governments, industry and society at a time when open constructive dialogue between regions is under threat. The benefits of developing strong technology regulations together are far greater than the benefits of protectionism and unilateralism, which bring greater risks. With this in mind, RAID, now standing for Regulation of AI, Internet and Data, takes place today under the theme of a transnational exchange at the frontier of tech regulation. With 40 speakers from government and regulatory authorities, including the EU Commission and the EU Parliament, the German Federal Ministry of Finance, the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, the European Banking Authority, the European Data Protection Supervisory Office, the Chinese Academy of Sciences and the China Internet Foundation, the Presidential Digital Transformation Office of Turkey, the OECD, the Bank for International Settlements, and many leading national regulators. And this is to name just a few of the illustrious organizations represented today. We welcome everybody to join this impartial and independent forum to help unite a polarizing world. We appreciate that there are some subjects which are harder to discuss at this moment, but we ask that everybody who joins today does so in a spirit of openness and willingness to find places where we can benefit from shared gain through discussing our shared challenges. We recognize differences, but we encourage open dialogue and as much cooperation as is possible. We're very keen to meet again physically, and we have a provisional date for a 2022 physical raid conference for Tuesday the 14th of June, likely to be either in Brussels or Paris. If you have any views on this, then we would very much welcome you to share them with us. As always, I would like to finish by expressing my sincere thanks to the Fondation Perspective at Innovation, and we will shortly hear from their chairman, former Prime Minister Jean-Pierre Raffarin. Please allow me to also thank Ambassador Serge Degelé and his FBI team, who are a long-standing and highly appreciated partner. Please can I also thank all of our wonderfully high-level speakers today. We thank you very much for joining us and are extremely interested to listen to all of your views. My particular thanks to another long-standing partner of Cavendish, Alan and Overy, whose support and contribution is highly appreciated. Thank you to my old friend, Chairman Wu Lebin, for his contribution today. And finally, thank you to all of our Cavendish team, many still working away from their homes for organising this very fine event indeed. I wish everybody an interesting day ahead at RAID. It's my pleasure and privilege to now begin the event by inviting EU Commissioner Reinders to speak. Ladies and gentlemen, mesdames et messieurs, j'aurais commencé par remercier nos hôtes, notamment Monsieur le Premier ministre Jean-Pierre Raffarin, pour l'invitation. It is a pleasure to open today's discussions where you will address key questions raised by the digital transitions. As it was true when JFK told the Democratic National Conference in 1960, today 
we also find ourselves at a new frontier. And just as he understood, America's new frontier was a set of challenges, so too is ours. For example, a successful digital transition is a major European priority. At the same time, the transition carries a number of challenges. A key challenge for the European Union is ensuring that new digital technologies respect all democratic values and the fundamental rights. Europe aims at being at the forefront of a data-driven society. We are also deeply committed to international data flows. In this context, our challenge is to ensure that when personal data collected in Europe travels overseas, the protection of this data travels with it. Another example are product safety rules. When Europe adopted the current legislation in this field, only 9% of Europeans were shopping online. Last year, this figure was 72%. Our challenge here is to keep consumers protected in a digital age. As Kennedy said, the old ways will not do. As the agenda of today's conference makes clear, there are many important questions around what the new ways should be. These are definitely some of the most pressing questions on the EU's mind right now. For example, you ask how the global pandemic has accelerated the demand for technology and appropriate regulation. When Europe was searching for a safe solution to protect free movement, a digital solution, the European Digital COVID Certificate, with a common European gateway, was clearly the best option. This required new EU-wide legislation, as well as financial support for member states to fund PCR and antibody tests, so as not to discriminate against people who would not get the vaccine. Another question is what regulatory frameworks should be put in place to manage the development of artificial intelligence for the benefit of industry and society. The European Union's objective is the protection of fundamental rights and safety where AI is used. This is the backbone of the legislative proposal we made in April this year. Our proposal follows a risk-based approach. We identified high risks in areas such as education, employment, access to credit or public assistance benefits, law enforcement, migration and asylum, justice, and remote biometric systems like facial recognition applications. For these high-risk applications, we want requirements to ensure appropriate documentation and testing, as well as adequate human oversight and reliability and accuracy of the systems. One of the most pressing questions you will be asking today relates to international standards in data governance and how can different regulators learn from each other's approaches. We are facing similar global challenges and I'm glad to see an increasing number of countries are converging towards putting in place modern data protection regimes. This is a truly global trend from Brazil to Japan, California to Korea and Kenya to India. As the G20 ministers underline in the Trieste Declaration, in a world that is often fragmented, this increasing convergence offers new opportunities to foster interoperability, harness the digital economy and better protect citizens' data. Before the summer, the EU adopted so-called modernized standard contractual clauses. This is the number one mechanism used by European companies when exporting data outside the European Union. As several other jurisdictions around the world are adopting similar model clauses, this is another area where we see a great potential for facilitating data flows. Again, 
the questions on today's agenda are the right questions we need to be asking ourselves as we cross this new frontier. So I look forward to hearing how you answer them today. And I wish you all a successful conference. Thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner Reinders, for such a thought-provoking speech. And um, hello, everyone. My name is Ben Avison. I'm the conference director at Cavendish Group, hosting RAID for you here today. And um, thank you, Commissioner Reinders, for highlighting the potential for the opportunities for the convergence of technology globally, which is right at the heart of, of what RAID is, is all about. So thank you for that. Speaking of new frontiers, AI has some of the greatest potential to transform our lives, but with uncertain risks. So I'm delighted to welcome Lucilla Scioli, Director for Artificial Intelligence and Digital Industry at the European Commission to the stage. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. And thank you very much for inviting me to address this event. And thanks a lot also to Monsieur Raffarin. I think it's very important that there is an, an exchange of ideas at the international level on how tech regulation can shape our future. Commissioner Reinders just said that the European Commission put in place uh, a proposal for a regulatory framework on artificial intelligence in April this year. And this framework is part of a larger package of measures in support of the development and use of artificial intelligence. This is because the Commission believes AI is very good for our life, it's very good for our economies, but at the same time, it carries some risk and the risk concern the violation of fundamental rights and of safety because artificial intelligence is complex, because it's a black box, and um, because it is difficult to, to predict how it will work. It is for this reason that the European Commission has decided to um, look at artificial intelligence and the rules about artificial intelligence so as to enhance trust of users of this technology. Indeed, lack of trust is a, an important barrier to the use of AI when we actually want people and businesses to make use of the technology. And the Commission proposal is based on some very um, simple principles. First of all, the fact that we are not regulating a technology, but we are we're regulating the use of the technology in certain contexts. Secondly, it's a proportionate approach. We uh, make use of a risk-based approach. With that, we mean that we have, for example, a ban for applications that we consider to be very, very high risk. For example, social scoring by public authorities. And then we have uh, a focus on applications that we consider to be high risk. And these applications, will have to undertake conformity assessments. So they have to be checked uh, before they're put on the market. This is the same approach that we use in safety legislation, in our internal market legislation, and it aims at minimizing the risk that AI can actually violate fundamental rights and safety once it is put in the market. And of course, we have a system of market surveillance authorities in case harm takes place. Our framework is future proof. It has to be because it is built around a technology. And so uh, through a system of delegated acts, we are, for example, going to be able to um, have a definition that over time can include different techniques of artificial intelligence that may come or they may be developed at a later stage. And at the same time, our uh, framework very much highlights a list of use cases that we consider to be high risk. And also this list can actually be modified over time if we encounter new applications that carry high risk to violate the fundamental rights and the safety of um, European citizens. The legislation is very precise and operational. We are not asking companies to make a risk assessment to see whether the applications they develop will actually carry high risk, but we try to come up with a very precise list of use cases. And this list has been piloted before um, our um, proposal was made. 
And uh, uh, by doing this, we think that we are creating legal certainty and a, predict a predictable operating environment for developers, for innovators, and for business. And essentially, what we ask them to do is to well document the operations they have made, the representatives of their data sets, the accuracy, the um, uh, robustness of their systems, so that um, they can think very well of the um, operations and the underlying operations of the system before these are put into use in the European market. Now, this topic is very important from the point of view of international cooperation, and many countries are thinking about it. Uh, the United States have just announced that they may come up with a Bill of Rights for Artificial Intelligence, and uh, also Japan and Canada have been very active also in reflecting about uh, uh, guidelines uh, or even at times on uh, regulatory terms. This is why the European Commission engages both in bilateral dialogues with these countries as well as in multilateral fora like the G20 or the G7 or the OECD. Um, and with the United States, as you probably know, uh, the dialogue is taking place in the context of the Trade and Technology Council. So we think it is time for us to work all together and exchange ideas on our programs and uh, uh, on our efforts. So I think it's great that these uh, discussions are organized at international level, and I really think we should try to um, have more of these exchanges and uh, um, bilaterally and in the context of international organizations. So have a great event today and I wish to all of you a very fruitful discussion. Thank you very much.